Hi, it's Jamie here at LGS, and in this video, we're going to be looking at automated workflow within the Proof HQ platform. So, in a previous video, we did take a look at uh, some workflow options that we've got within the platform. And the previous example that we did uh, was a very, very straightforward workflow which involved just sending the uh, proof to one other person. And we can see that person is listed here. And we can see in our workflow process that there is only one stage in our workflow. So we've shared it with one user and we've had feedback on that proof and that proof has then been approved. So a very straightforward uh, single process back and forth um, to get that proof approved. What we can actually do is actually use automated workflow to build out much more stages within our workflow. So that way if we've got internal approval, perhaps it needs to be approved by a design team and a legal team. Um, those rounds of approval can take place. They can be private, they can just be within your organization. And then once that internal approval has been done, you can then potentially share that out with a client and again into different departments there. So you can be very, very granular in how you can control that. So to set up an automated workflow, we can see down the left hand side here that we've got a workflows area that's available to us. And if I click on that workflows area, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build out a brand new workflow that I want to use for this example. So we can see that we've already got a couple of workflow templates that we've generated previously. And what I'm going to do now is select new and generate a new workflow template. So this is an automated workflow that we can, we can generate. I'm going to call this client X and we can select our template owner so I'm going to leave that as me. Um, or we can also set our automated workflows into workflow groups so I'm going to leave it in the default group for now. We can control the permissions that we've got so we've got lots of options here I'm not going to go into too much detail to keep things moving on but I'm going to leave them all enabled for now. You'll see now that we've got a stages area. So previously when we've done examples, we've literally had one stage and that is to send it to the client and the client to respond. What we're actually gonna now do is rather than leaving that default stage one, I'm going to give that an alternative name for stage one. So I'm gonna call this design review. And what I'm gonna do is set my deadline on that. So we can see that I can set the deadline so I'm going to say one business day and I can set the time on that so I'm going to set that for four o'clock so that way we can say that when the uh, process starts we can say what the deadline is from when that process starts we can define that we can say when the stage is going to get activated so I'm going to say on proof creation and we can say when the deadline is calculated from and that one business day, we, again, we'd say that's from proof creation, but we can say from stage activation. So we get lots of options here. Uh, we can choose if we want to lock the stage when the next stage starts or when all decisions are made. Or we can change who the primary decision maker is. We've also got the option to say only one decision required. That means even if at the design review stage you've got four designers that are designing and reviewing that piece of content, all it takes is for one of those people in the chain to make the decision that it's approved and then it will move to the next stage. You can select it to be a private stage and this means that your external clients or perhaps the legal team internally within your building will not have any visibility um, on this aspect uh, of the approval. So any comments that might get written on won't be viewable um, later down the line. And you can also stop that stage being deleted. You can then add in the people that are going to be um, involved in that um, part of the process. So I'm just going to put in a test user now and you can have multiple people on here and I'm going to set Sarah as a reviewer and approver on that piece of content and I'm going to set her to have a daily summary in terms of email alerts regarding um, that piece of content. So we can now see that we've generated our first stage in the workflow. I'm now going to generate another stage and I'm going to say this is going to be for uh, internal marketing review. And again, we can set our deadline on that. So I'll put that down as one business day, leave it as half one. And we can say that we can set the activation stage. So we can say that this stage is actually going to get 
uh, generated when all decisions are approved uh, on the parent stage. Um, so that way the stage before can be selected to complete before we get into this stage. So I'm going to say the design review stage. And we see it's quite easy to actually see the process. We can see now that we've got two steps. Um, deadline calculated, I'll leave that on proof creation. I'm not going to lock the stage. Uh, I'm also going to make this private so that way uh, clients don't get any visibility. And I can then put the person in that's responsible for that, set their role, set their email alerts. I'm going to make that an hourly summary for that user. And then we can go to the next stage. I'm going to call this client review. And again, we can say when that stage is going to activate, what the deadlines are. So we can customize this, but I'll leave it on default. And we can say, we can actually set it when the previous deadline is reached. So that way, if it goes over deadline, you can automatically go to the next stage. But I'm going to say all decisions are approved on the parent stage. And this time, the parent stage is internal marketing review. Or we can see that's running. At the moment, this is linear, so it's got to go through design review internal marketing review before it gets to the client review but you can actually have linear stages and parallel stages so that way you could perhaps have design and internal marketing both at, both viewing the content at the same time and then once they're both signed off it goes to client review so this is very very flexible and you can play around with this um, during your trial um, to be able to customize that I'm not going to make this a um, private stage and going to leave uh, primary decision maker as none and then I'm going to put the client name in again I'll just use an example for that put their role in their email alerts maybe a daily summary on that front and now because that's now completed I don't want to generate any more stages after that so I'm now going to create that stage and we see now that that's generating and we can now see in our workflows area the name of our workflow, which is called Client X. And we can see now that we've got a design review, an internal marketing review, and then the Client X review. We can, of course, edit this, um, this workflow, provided we've got permissions um, at any time. So we can always make changes on that front. Now, what this means is if I go back into my example folder now, and I actually generate a new proof. So I'm going to go in, select new proof, and select my file. I'm going to use a PDF in this example. We see that's now uploading into the platform. And by default, we can see that we can just share that with one person or a selected amount of people. But what I'm actually going to say now is to use automated workflow and I can actually build out my automated workflow right from within the proof generation area but I'm actually going to select the one that I've already generated in the workflow templates and we can see now that it's automatically applied um, that specification so we can see that template has been applied and I've still got the ability to edit it at this stage if I want to customize it a bit um, for this specific client but I'm going to leave it on default we can see that that's all in and now when I click create it will now generate that proof uh, with that workflow assigned and I can see straight away while it's processing that we're currently on the design review stage and we can see very clearly now below the people that are involved in the design review, the internal marketing review and the client review and we can see what the status is of those people involved within the process. So it's very very easy to, to generate uh, linear or multi-stage parallel um, automated workflows and you can customize these on a per client basis. Hope that that's acted as a, a good introduction to automated workflow. Please don't hesitate to get in touch and we can set you up with a trial uh, if you wish. Thank you for listening.